We just made this giant faux metal wall clock using a jigsaw and our polar laser and we'll show you how we did it right now. What is up? Welcome back. Do you like to do a build it or make it? So do we. And we have a new video each week so be sure to like, comment, subscribe and hit that bell to be notified of our new videos. This week if you've watched our channel for a while, then you know that I like big clocks and I cannot lie. <laughs> yes, we do a new clock just about once or twice a year. Yeah. I do love making clocks. Well, so I like finding new ways to make clocks. Yeah, so this one's different than any of the ones we've done before where they're always a little bit different. This one's different because we're going to show you how we're going to make a 36 inch clock using our desktop laser and a jigsaw the easy way. Step one, we're gonna gather all of our supplies. We needed a sheet of half inch plywood, we needed a sheet of five millimeter plywood, a jigsaw, our Omtec polar laser. We're gonna need some paint, we're gonna make this look like metal, so galvanized metal, so we're gonna use this hammered silver. A little primer to prime our boards first, sandpaper to smooth out those rough edges. And some glue. And some stain. And some stain. <laughs> Step two, we're gonna make all of our cuts. I'm gonna show you a new trick that I learned to make a perfect circle out of plywood using a jigsaw. And his new favorite thing, some alien tape. Alien tape, I love my <laughs> alien tape. <laughs> I'm gonna use the panel saw to cut this five millimeter inch plywood down to something that will fit inside the desktop laser. I'm gonna go with like 10 by 18. That way I'll get the most out of each board. I have this little five millimeter scrap left over from cutting the five millimeter plywood. I'm gonna cut just a little slot in there kind of try to line it up with the foot there. I'm just cutting a little slot so the blade will slide in. Yeah, let me turn that up. So the blade will slide in when I put it on the other way. There you go, look at that. I'm gonna use some alien tape. I love this stuff. I'm gonna use some alien tape and tape my jigsaw to this piece of wood. Now, I'm measuring it using the back side because once this alien tape sticks to something, it is stuck. Now I'm gonna try to keep the foot, the left side of this drill, or left side of this saw, I'm gonna try to keep that foot flush with the board so I get a nice even cut. And I'm just gonna press it down. It says hold it for 30 seconds. Now I want this clock to be 36 inches around, so I'm gonna measure 18 inches from the blade, I'm gonna leave a little mark. Then I'm gonna measure how deep the blade goes back, that it's about an inch. So I'm gonna measure an inch down here so that this hole is even or level with the blade up at the top. I'm just putting a little tiny hole in here, just enough so that I could get a screw in there and the screw will spin freely. I'm gonna find the center of the board that I'm gonna cut the circle out of. I'm just gonna draw an X and wherever the X lands is the middle, from corner to corner. Now I'm gonna place the hole that I just drilled over the X that I just made. I'm gonna put a screw through the hole and try to hit the center of that X and then screw it in there. I don't wanna screw it too tight though. I want the saw to be able to move around freely or the little compass to move around freely.
I'm using a drill bit the size of my saw blade just to start a pilot hole right out on the edge. I'm gonna have to bend the blade just slightly to get it in the pilot hole, but that's fine. It'll even out as it goes around and then I'll just continue around until I cut past that pilot hole. I'm not gonna push at all. I'm letting the saw do all of the work. I'm just simply spinning the board underneath the saw. I mean, this is pretty brainless. I don't, I don't even need to pay attention. I guess I don't want to lose any fingers, but otherwise, this is really easy. I'm going to continue on past that pilot hole, like I said, just to make sure that it's nice and even and clean. I'm going to keep going a little bit more. Remove the screw and I have a perfect circle. Perfect. All right, I have my perfect circle. I mean, that was a lot easier than I thought. He's making me hold the board. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm gonna take this five millimeter plywood over to the Omtake Polar Laser and we're gonna cut out all of our numbers for our clock. Step three, time to paint. <laughs> and sand. We're, we're gonna sand and paint. We're trying to get this surface nice and smooth so that when we spray it with that hammered steel look, it'll look like hammered steel and not soak into the wood. So we're gonna sand it really well, we're gonna prime it really well, and then we're gonna sand it really well. You know what I love? Brand new sandpaper. <laughs> yeah. I love new sandpaper. That new sandpaper feel. small little tiny gloves they don't come all the way down I was gonna say I think they're great you oh you know what though because the gloves don't fit <laughs> you must have quit <laughs> which means you're not gonna stay <laughs> come on well then I've got some rubber gloves you can use Just wait for everything to dry. Next step, we're gonna add the spray paint. So we've primed it, we sanded it, it's nice and smooth, and we wanna give it that galvanized look. I want the metal look, but I don't know where to get metal and I can't cut metal. If you guys followed our previous videos, the last time Garrett cut metal, he almost, I don't know, he's behind this wall here. He almost stabbed himself in the eye with some, some metal shears, anyway. We're going to use this hammered silver spray paint to give it that galvanized look. That's what they called me in college. Hammered, hammered stain, silver. Hammered
Step four. Ooh, time to assemble. We're gonna start by laying out all of our little stained numbers around the outside. Around the outside. <laughs> yeah, I knew that was Using cool. this little tool that I made to help us space them out. Once we think it's all right, we're gonna glue them all down with a little bit of Starbond Thick. I guess we'll start at high noon. I gotta find noon. Oh, it must be at the bottom. I don't see noon. XII, right? Shoo, excuse me. <laughs> Oh. I couldn't even answer you. Was that the one you had in your hand? It was the one I had in my hand. Okay, so tell me how you made this little jig. So I just made it so it would space the one that it's on and then the two next to it. It just brings it to the edge. Okay. That's the yeah, wrong. you probably don't want seven. Yeah. Wait a minute, do we have, oh no, no, no. What is this? Um, that way? What's that, four? Well, they can't have two letters, is that right? You can't, am I looking at it wrong? What are you talking about? Well, IV would be four, but you can't have IIV. I'm just saying, like, VII is seven. Yeah. Uh huh. So that's seven. Okay, let's just keep going. That's nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Where's eight? Is that IIB? Was it, well I can tell this was the back, so. Yeah, that was the back. One, two, three, <laughs> four, five, six, seven. Nine. Oh, there should be an I-I-X. No, there, no. It's V-I-I, -I, three, three I's after it. That's eight. Are you sure? Yeah, 100%. I'm good with my Roman numerals. I guess I will go cut an actual Roman numeral eight. That is a made up Roman numeral. So it's V I I I don't know. I was just I was like That looks right. I'm not Roman. I'm not Roman. <laughs> well I was doing the math and then I saw this number and I was like, I don't know what that number is. I don't know what that number is. <laughs> Did you know you could get all of our files, behind the scene content, and even a Kim and Garrett After Dark podcast? As well as monthly Zoom calls, access to a secret Facebook group, and we'll even send you one of these fancy t-shirts, all for $20 a month. It's the best way to support this channel. So join us over at Patreon.com. I'm back with the right eight. I spaced on what a Roman numeral eight looked like. <laughs> it's not like I use them in my, my daily day. What? You don't normally count in Roman numerals? Nope, I don't. I use my abacus instead. <laughs> clock bits and pieces. I'm gonna widen the hole that the little screw is in to help me draw my perfect circle. I'm gonna widen it and then we'll add all the little clock pieces. Does it, these, this one doesn't tell you exactly the size of the shaft. There's no shaft size. I'm just kind of guessing. Well, I mean, it should tell you. I 
I did not see any markings. I'm going to use some painter's tape to protect my faux metal while I'm drilling my hole. We're going to go from front to back, right? So it yeah. doesn't front splinter to through. The old front to back. that up now. Swept. Just a couple of those. Now let's see what the back looks like. It's not big enough, I can tell you. Step five, and now we have the accents. <laughs> we're gonna add some D hooks so that we can actually hang this big guy. But first, we're gonna put them on a little scrap of half inch plywood, this little scrap from cut and circle. I'm gonna add the D hooks to this piece of scrap. I'm gonna add some star bond to the back. We'll level it, I'll put it up on there, and then throw two screws in the back of this guy pinning it to the back of the clock. And we're doing that because the clock piece sticks out the back a little bit. About a half so inch. So this is about the same width and allow the, the clock to hang flush. Yeah, it should hang flat instead of being all kicked out, laid back. I have it down here by my feet. That's why I'm all leaned in like this. <laughs> all right, let me throw these pieces on there. The great thing about these D-hooks, they come with the screws already in there. All you have to do is just screw right in. Need it hanging all cattywampus. I'm gonna add a little star bond, just a little strip. Just... You can use wood glue. Yeah, you can use wood glue. <laughs> Starbond just happens to be what's handy. That's my favorite right there. Starbond is like my Frank's Red Hot. Whoa, what's happening? Oh, you're gonna do it like that. Yeah. Sorry. All right, is that straight up and down? Yes. All right. Wanna draw a little line so that you can lay it down flat and screw it in? No, just hold it. No. I'm going to push against you. Oh no, 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 not like that. Oh, all right, you got to stop moving it. I was ready to go. What do you mean not like that? I can't lay it down. Yes, you can. Well, why add a step? You're not holding it very well. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe we're not using the best method. Oh man, are you serious? All right, there we go. Done and done. All right, what do you think? This sucker is huge, the biggest wristwatch ever. Small desktop laser, big project. Taking these numbers and then breaking your pieces down into smaller pieces that can be reassembled larger is a great way to... Think do... outside of your cutting area. Yeah. Leave me a comment down below about the biggest project you ever made on your laser. And with that, I think we're about out of time, so... If you're not going to join us for the patron after show, we will see you next week where we'll do it, build it, and make it again. And, uh...
Don't forget about Tuesdays where we're live and we do some kind of test cut or something every Tuesday. This thing's a lot heavier than it looks. One finger. Why are we doing it with one finger? Okay. 